alterations in mobility, pathophysiology, and management. The musculoskeletal system supports the body and facilitates movement. It also stores a lot of minerals and protects vital organs, in addition to being involved in the production of blood cells. Bones in the human body, there's 206 bones. They're classified as short bones, long bones, flat bone, and irregular bones. We have two types of bony tissue. We have the cancellous bone, which is spongy tissue, and cortical bone, which is compact, dense, and hard. Bones are composed of cells, protein matrix, and mineral deposits. Different types of bone cells, we have the osteoblasts, which help build the bone, the osteocytes, which are mature bone cells, and osteoclasts, which are involved in the destruction, reabsorption, and remodeling of bone. Then in the bone, we have the bone marrow. Red bone marrow is going to be found in the sternum, ilium, vertebrae, ribs, and they manufacture blood cells and hemoglobin. Now, yellow marrow is going to be found in the long bones, and it's made up of fat cells and connective tissues. And it can take on the characteristics of red marrow and manufacture blood cells and hemoglobin if necessary. Skeletal muscles are independent and promote the movement of bones. We have smooth and cardiac muscle, and these are involuntary muscles. Cardiac muscle is found only in the heart. Smooth muscle will line body cavities and is part of the walls of many of the organs. Movement will be triggered by neurotransmitters from the autonomic nervous system. Our joints, we have the junction between two or more bones. We have free moving or diathroidal joints between most joints in the body. The synarthroidal has no movement within the joint. And then the amphiarthroidal has limited movement between the joint, such as the vertebrae. Tendons are cord-like structures that attach muscles to the periosteum of the bone. And that attachment of the muscle origin is more fixed and the insertion has more mobility. Ligaments are fibrous tissue that connects two adjacent, freely movable bones and help stabilize joints. Cartilage is firm, dense type of connective tissue. It reduces friction between two articular surfaces, helps absorb shock, and reduces stress on the joints. Types of cartilage include hyaline or articular, costal, semilunar, fibrous, and elastic. Then we have bursa, which are small sacs that are filled with synovial fluid that help reduce friction between areas. True or false? There are two types of bones in the body. False. True or false? Tendons attach bone to bone. Again, this is false. True or false? Ligaments attach bone to bone. This one is true. So when we're doing our assessment, 
we need to look at the history. Is this disorder chronic? What is their medical, drug, allergy, familial, occupational histories? Is it a recent injury? And if so, when did it occur? How did it occur? Is it an open injury? And if it's an open injury, when was the last date of their tetanus immunization? If it is less than five years, they're good. If it's over five years, they're potentially going to get another tetanus immunization. Uh, otherwise, if they don't have injury, then that should be uh, they should be revaccinated about every 10 years. We also need to determine all of the symptoms. We also need to determine the effect of activity on the symptoms. In other words, uh, are they having so much knee pain when they walk that they are limiting their ambulation, which could have additional issues such as development of blood clots or weight gain or potential development of pneumonia, etc. So when we do the physical exam, then we need to assess the musculoskeletal system by looking at the motor skills, their muscle strength. Is there any wasting of the muscles? Look at the muscles. Are they symmetrical from side to side? How big are they? What is their range of motion? And are they appropriately aligned? Is there any pain, tenderness, swelling, redness? With the spinal inspection, we're looking for kyphosis, lordosis, or scoliosis. Kyphosis is going to be the hump back. Lordosis is Think of a pregnant woman whose uh, pregnant belly begins to pull on the lower back. So then they have that exaggerated curve of the lower back. And scoliosis is going to be that curve of the spine off to one side or the other. We're looking at neurovascular. Do they have any spasms or tremors? Their vital signs swelling, external bleeding, bruising, open wounds, debris, protrusion of a bone or tissue. What is their circulation peripherally? And always, always, always remember we need to know what it is distal to a potential injury. What is their sensation or is there any malalignment to an injured limb? Is there injury beyond the original site? What type of pain and where is that pain? And always complete that neurovascular assessment, which includes circulation. We're checking distal pulses to make sure distally they are getting good circulation. That includes the capillary refill and the temperature of the skin, edema and skin color. We're checking movement and strength, sensation, pain, and we're assessing bilaterally to determine if there is a difference from side to side. Diagnostic tests include imaging procedures, arthroscopies, arthrocentesis, bone densometry, fracture risk assessment, bone scans, electromyography, biopsy, in addition to blood and urinary tests. With diagnostic tests, make sure the client is aware of examination protocols. Make sure that we send appropriate specimens to the lab and ensure safe recovery after the procedure. If there is a chronic disorder, make sure that we have that good medical history. What are their current symptoms and their drug history? In other words, what medications do they take? And do they have any allergies? If we're doing an invasive joint examination, make sure that you inspect post-procedure for swelling, bleeding, or drainage. 
and change or reinforce any dressings based on the provider's prescription. With traumatic injury, we need to know how that injury occurred, what mechanisms were involved. Was it blunt force? Was it from a fall, uh, etc.? Make sure you monitor vital signs and the neurovascular status and provide comfort and support. Very important to educate on a bone healthy diet. So they need not only the increased calcium, but they also need increased vitamin D. They may require vitamin K, magnesium, and potassium to help maintain bone density. And educate on weight bearing exercises if this is appropriate to help strengthen the bone.